I'm so excited that you all have been able to join us today. This is going to be an awesome time to learn a bit, um, a little bit more about what it's like to be a part of a community at OU. And that's a really, really important part of the college experience. And we want to help provide that for you. So Kimberly, do you want to do a quick introduction? And then I can kind of introduce what will be happening after. Sweet. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kimberly West, and I oversee the out-of-state recruitment for OU. I am based in North Texas, so I'm very familiar with our folks in Wichita Falls and Highland Park. I think Highland, I thought Highland Village, Texas, I saw. So welcome. Thank you for coming and joining us. As Kate said, we're really excited that you're considering the University of Oklahoma as your final college choice. And we're just here to let you know that we want you to join our family. Um, there are some folks on this call who are recent grads who are um, full-time staff members who have spent there's this part of their day um, here to help you and facilitate this, this wonderful conversation. We want you to know that it is a conversation and please use the chat to ask questions as we, as we are um, kind of going through the session. I'll let Kay introduce our first speaker and then we'll also follow it by a panel. Great, yeah, so thanks again. Yeah, my name is Kay Chai. I'm one of our admissions counselors here out of the Tulsa office. So we do have people kind of all over the United States work in for you all, the students. And this is one of the special things we get to do to help serve y'all. So first I'm gonna have my good friend Hunter start us off. Hunter works in student life. And so he's gonna be talking a little bit about that student life experience and some details about what you can expect from the student life office that we have on campus, which is again, also there to serve you as well. So Hunter, take it away. Yeah, thanks Kate. Uh, so like Kate said, my name is Hunter Guinera. Um, I Went to OU, I graduated in 2016 and 2018, spent a little bit of time uh, in admissions and recruitment when I was in grad school. And now, as Kate said, spent the last about four and a half years working in student life. Um, so student life is part of student affairs, but we're gonna get into like what that means as we talk about finding community at, at OU. So if you give me just a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, and you're gonna see behind the curtain for about three seconds while I get it set. And then I'm gonna click that present button and then you'll just see what I want you to see. So, um, like, like Kimberly and Kate mentioned, finding community to OU is so, so important. It is such an important part of the college experience. Um, and I know you're sitting here like you're, you're not in class right now, you're not in school, but we're going to talk a little bit about theory because that's what we do in education. So uh, this pyramid is something that we study when we talk about college students. It's called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Uh, we're not going to get into what that means right now, but essentially, there is this pyramid, the bottom of a pyramid is a foundation. It's the things that we need in order to really just like be successful and be and be who we need to be. And I want to look at the middle of that pyramid, right? So if we if we look below that, we see the physiological needs. So as people, as college students, we need food, we need oxygen, we need those physiological things, right? The next thing we need is that safety. We need shelter. We need a place to stay to protect us from the elements, things like that. The very next thing that we need is belonging, right? It is that, that sense of belonging, that community that we have, is, it is essential to who we are as people and especially as college students. So I wanna talk about how we do that here at OU. Um, there's gonna be a collection of threes that we kind of see throughout this, uh, but before we get into that, I do wanna talk about student affairs. So the idea of student affairs is that we add to the experience to the academic journey, right? So when we talk student affairs, when you hear that term, it means the outside of the classroom, college experience. Uh, so student life, the office I'm a part of, we are a part of the Division of Student Affairs, but that also covers housing and food, right? So let's see if we could do like a show, the, the like reaction emoji thing. Who plans on eating a meal while they're a college student? At any point, just eating a meal, right? Hopefully we're going to see a lot of those, yeah, hands up, hand emojis, all the reactions. Yeah, that's part of student affairs, right? That's, that's just a little sneak peek into kind of what we do, but there's a lot more beyond that right, than just, just food. It is everything outside the classroom. Student affairs is, is gonna work in that to some extent. Um, but when we, we talk about this idea of belonging, we talk about how student affairs does that, I wanna get into uh, less about OU specific things. We'll kind of hit on that at the end, but more so with you just as a college student, right? And coming into your first year, what you can do in order to build community and find that sense of belonging. Um, so one of the first places you can do that is inside your residence halls. We're going to talk through a few strategies for how you can do that here in just, what is it, like six or seven months basically at this point, or I guess seven or eight months maybe, uh, for kind of how you can start to build that community within your residence halls. So maybe for the first time in your lives, you're going to be living in a community of all just people your age, right, just 
that, that have this similar experience to you, uh, but are all in a new place, right? You, you get to start from the ground up. So one of the first things that you're going to learn about is your residence hall when you're here at OU. You're going to meet the people that are on your floor. You're going to see, uh, see these people every day, right? They're going, they're going to walk past your room. You're going to walk past theirs. Um, so one of the things that you can do while you're a college student to start to build that community is to leave your residence hall room door open while you're in there, right? If it's time that you have just to yourself, uh, maybe you're, you're not studying anything like that. You're just kind of hanging out. Leave that door open. Say hi to people that walk past. You know, as you're walking past rooms and someone with their door open, stick your head in, say hi, get to know people, get to meet people. You may like meet your floor and think that, oh, we're from all over the place, we have nothing in common, but you never know when that one conversation comes up that something clicks, right? That you find out that you were into the same thing in high school, or you, you went on vacation to some place that, that, that they had gone to also, and you find those little things, those little ways to start to build that community and find those friends and really start to build those relationships which we know are so imperative to the college experience. Um, another thing you can do within the residence halls is you can hang out with your RAs and you can go to their events. So does anybody know what an RA is? If you, if you have an idea of what a resident advisor is, can you put it in the chat for me? Any, any thoughts about what a, was it, what a resident advisor is? We'll give it a second. I was an education major, so I can wait. You know, it'll, it'll be like class all over again. There we go. Thank you, Evan. So yeah. So uh, an RA is an upperclassman that basically lives on a floor with, with our residents and makes sure things are okay, make sure they're having a good time, make sure, making sure that everyone's following the rules, that's a thing too, but really just there to help out and make sure that you're getting the most out of your experience. The RAs are gonna plan events, right? They're gonna do things, they're gonna say, hey, it's, oh, it's February, the Super Bowl's on, we're gonna put the Super Bowl on in, in the TV lounge, right? Come, come and hang out, we'll have snacks. Or they're gonna say, you know, fall's coming up, we're, we're getting into, into kind of a, a tougher time, we're going to do a self-care day, right? And we're going to have some, some hot chocolate. Come hang out and just relax, things like that. I'd really encourage you, go to those events, right? Check it out. Try those things. Uh, one, your RAs put a lot of effort into them. And two, we know that when people don't go to those, the RAs are kind of like, man, I, I did all this work and, and wanted to be speaking. And you can meet some really cool people that way. So it's good, kind of that, that uh, mutual benefit there of you're helping them out there, helping you out. And it's a great time. So that's just the beginning, right? That's just the residence halls. But next we move into the classroom, right? So the biggest thing we're here for is, is for school, right? We gotta, we gotta get that degree. We're gonna be here in the classroom. Uh, but there's a few things in the classroom you can do too. Um, on that first day of classes, odds are you're gonna walk into a, a 1000 level course at some point. Uh, so a 1000 level is means for a first year student. So it starts with a one. In those classes specifically, I would really encourage you that as you find your spot to sit, introduce yourself to the people around you. It'll be that same thing like in the residence halls. You never know who you may run into, um, who, who you may have something in common with, who you may see in a class later on down the line, right? You can go ahead and start building those relationships, build that community. Now, the extra benefit to building community within the classroom is that they've got the same homework and tests that you do, right? So you're going to start to build those study groups. You're going to find those people that you can ask questions, but maybe there's a concept that you don't quite like grasp as well as somebody else. These are great ways to start to build that community. Some of my best friends from OU is, are those people that I just happen to sit by on the first day of class. Um, and then you just click with them and later on down the line, you are just like really great friends and that continues beyond college. So a really good opportunity uh, when everybody's in a space that they have to be in in the classroom, right, to meet people. Also go to office hours. When we talk about community, I think a lot of times we just think of like our classmates, but that community extends well beyond just your peers when you're in a place like college. Um, in high school, it may have felt a little different of like, you, you may not be like friends with teachers or, or things like that, but that's not the case in college, right? You're going to meet people, whether it's professors, graduate students, staff members, that you really click and connect with, and they can truly be your community uh, while in school. So this is a great way to do it. Go to office hours, get to know your professors, meet the graduate students who are helping with class, meet those other people who are there for study uh, or to study and ask questions, right? Build that community just by putting yourself out there a little bit. Um, you'll, and you'll find kind of as we talk through this, this does take some effort on your part, right? You've got to put yourself out there a little bit, ask some questions, and it can be tough. I, I'm a shy person, which really doesn't make sense for student affairs, right? Because we, we do presentations like this. We get in front of people and talk a lot. So I know that it's tough. But also that's why staff and faculty members are here, right? They want to help you thrive and make those connections, right? So we're going to help you do that. And, and office hours is a great way to do that as well. And then lastly, and this will help us kind of transition into what student affairs and student life is about. It's just the idea of doing things around campus. Um, so if you've been on a tour of OU or if you know really anything 
think about any college in general, you know that there are tons of student organizations, right? Tons of different ways to get involved. Um, so when I say to, to build that community around campus, really what I'm talking about is that involvement, that piece outside the classroom where you have obligations to go to things, whether it's weekly meetings for an executive team, uh, whether it's events that you're going to, things like that. And there's lots of different ways to do this, right? And so to dive into this a little bit more, I want to get into a few of the different ways that we do get involved, right? And the first is for fun, right? So again, we'll do the show of hands, kind of reactions, the emoji or whatever. Who likes to have fun? Who wants to have fun while they're in college? And so hopefully we're going to see a lot of those, uh, those reactions, those emojis, things like that. We love it. So thank you. Thank you all for participating with that. That's a lot of fun too. Um, so yeah, we all want to have a good time, right? That's part of the college experience is having fun, right? So I encourage you as, as you start to look at OU and even all the, maybe the other schools you're looking at too, start to see what you can get involved in. That's just for fun, just because you want to have a good time. Um, if you like cars, right? And you want to go to the University of Oklahoma, but you're not going to study anything that has to do with cars and vehicles. You can join our motorsports group that they hang out with their cars in the Lloyd Noble parking lot every week. And that's just what they do is kind of check out people's cars, stuff like that, just having a good time, right? Just those super fun things. You can join the Lettuce Club. I know we, I love talking about the Lettuce Club. I think it's hilarious. The Lettuce Club gets together. They eat a head of lettuce. If you eat it fastest, you're the head of lettuce at that point. And you get to decide when they meet next. So just real fun things. There's a lot of opportunities to do that. And it just feels good to have a good time, right? So that's how we can really do things and get involved just for fun. It does go a little bit deeper though. We can also get involved for the greater good, uh, right? This is a, I think a really important piece to the college experience. As we start to mature and grow older, uh, we start to realize the importance of what it means to give back. I mean, college is a great time to start to feel that out, right? So we can do things like the big event, which is like OU's official day of community service, where we're going out to all across the like Oklahoma City metro area and giving back to the community to ask for nothing in return, right? Or maybe it's doing something like Dance Marathon where we're raising money uh, for kids in Oklahoma City at the Children's Hospital to make sure that they never get charged uh, for the services that they receive there, right? So there's lots of ways to get involved and give back. And honestly, like selfishly, it feels good, right? We like to feel good. It feels good to give back when we really see uh, the, the impact that we can make on the world around us. And then lastly, you want to do it for your future. Uh, so we've talked about a lot of fun organizations. We've talked about some service organizations. Uh, we have talked about the pre-professional organizations as well. Um, one of the largest student groups that we have on campus is our engineers club, right? If you're an engineering student, kind of by default, you're in the engineers club and you can have a good time, right? You can do those fun things with that, but also it, it breeds kind of a place where uh, you can build that community, but also build your network of, of your professional contacts, right? Of alumni that may come back to speak at a meeting or the people that will be your peers in the field later on. Um, so you can do a lot of different, uh, get involved in a lot of different ways, kind of pre-professionally. And it may not just be your major. Right, it may be just something you're interested in. So let's say uh, you're studying psychology. You don't want to be a member of the psychology club because you want to do pre-med. Cool, join the pre-med club. You can do that, right? You can branch out outside of your major, even in these professional organizations. And I'd really encourage it because it's a great way again, to build that community, kind of put your feelers out across all of campus and build that professional network. Now, beyond this, I like to get into kind of the story mode and kind of like why, why we do all of this. Um, so. One of the first pieces of advice I want to give you is that involvement's a buffet. Um, now, I will say this is a picture of couch restaurants. So you can, you can check out the wonderful buffet of food that we've got there down, uh, down with, with our residence halls. Uh, but the, uh, the idea of a buffet is about, um, you know, the first time you go to a buffet, right? For the first time, you walk through the line, you get a little bit of everything. Oh, this looks good. I'm going to put this on the plate. Oh, this one looks good. Put this on the plate. And you work your way all down the line. Right, and you try a little bit of everything. After you sit down and eat that, let's, let's say that that's your first year, right? That's like your first year in school. Your second trip up to the buffet, like your second year in school, you know what you like. You've kind of figured it out a little bit. Okay, I really liked these, uh, these vegetables over here. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of those this time. And you keep doing that year after year and trip after trip back to the buffet, you're gonna find those things that you really love that really speak to you, that you know are really meaningful to you. And then as you continue to go through school, you get more and more invested into those things. And it's okay to say, you know what? I'm, I think I'm finished with, the, with this other thing I did. Totally fine. That is totally okay, right? To find those things you're passionate about and continue to pour more into those because they're going to give you more back as well. The next little anecdote that I want to talk about is maybe the best piece of advice I ever got uh, while I was at OU. It came from Kristen Partridge, who is 
our associate vice president for student affairs, she is wonderful. Um, she told me my freshman year, she said, Hunter, this is the place to take risks. This is the biggest team you are ever going to have, right? When you walk around OU, you have to understand that everybody there, everybody you see is on your team. And that doesn't really exist beyond the college campus, right? So this is the place to try something new, get out of your comfort zone. If you have an idea for something like, man, I, I really would love to do this event or start this group or, or try something like this. This is the place to do it. What is there to lose? You've got staff and faculty members who are there to back you up and a team of people all around you who want to see you succeed. So when we look at, at kind of what that means to build a community, it means take those risks. Somebody else is probably going to want to take that risk too, right? And try this thing with you, right? So it's a great time to just go out there, put yourself out there and really try something new. And then last but not least, I want to talk about this idea of clip on. So it's my blurriest picture because I had to find a community that I clipped onto. So I'm, I'm in this picture, but I'm not going to tell you where because I'm blurry enough that you may not be able to tell. Uh, but these are a lot of a lot of my great friends that while I, I spent time in college, we we did our orient we were on orientation staff together, right? And this idea of clipping on is, is meant to be like a carabiner. So everybody know what the, the carabiner clip is like when you go climbing? It's the kind of oblong, like round, D-shaped one. I wish I, I might have one on me. I don't, I should have brought one, but a carabiner clip is important to climbing because you hook it onto the rope and that's what keeps you secure onto the mountain, right? And so if you're just free climbing, no clips, no ropes, no anything, that is terrifying, right? There's, there's a lot of risk involved there. When we look at the college experience, we're saying you don't have to free climb, right? You don't have to do that at all. We're gonna give you an unlimited amount of carabiner clips of rope, clip onto things, clip onto those staff members that you find that you really connect with, that you know have your best interest at heart. Clip onto those friends, right? Clip onto those programs. Clip onto those things that you know are going to keep you secure on that mountain that is college, because it's tough, right? It, it can be a challenge. So just know that there's always people around you that want to see you succeed, that you can clip onto, and just know that they're doing the same to you, right? So it's not just a one-way relationship. Just know that there's going to be times where they're struggling, where they're clipped onto you, and you're going to find that you support them as well, right? So to wrap this all up, I do have to give kind of a plug for student life and what we do. So the Office of Student Life, we can help you with all of these things. We uh, are a part of the Division of Student Affairs, like I mentioned, and we are made up of three core components, uh, that being our campus programs, made up of OU Cousins, where we partner domestic students with international students, our union programming board, which really focuses on the union and kind of what we do here, but there's always something going on at UPB. And then our Campus Activities Council, which is our programming branch of our student government associations. They do big things like homecoming, dance marathon, things like that. We also have multicultural programs and services in student life. So if you're looking to get connected with the cultural community, come see us. This is what we do is we help plug you in. And last but not least, we have fraternity and sorority programs and services. So these are the big things we do in student life. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM in the chat. We'll be hanging around for the rest of this. I think I've gone a little bit long, so I apologize to all of our friends who, who are going next. I hope I haven't taken too much time, but I'm gonna hand it back over to Kate and Kimberly and let y'all move on to our next thing. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. No worries. Thanks so much, Hunter. If y'all will drop a, a little clap emoji there so we can let Hunter know how much we appreciate him. That would be great. And yeah, continue to, to utilize the chat and we'll have people who can answer some questions there for you. So next, I want to pass it over to two of my very good friends, Justin and Taya. They are former OU students who got really plugged in with OU's campus and really embody what it meant to find your community um, at OU. And so I'm super stoked to get to hear from them. So um, Taya and Justin, would y'all just share your own personal little story on how you found your community at OU? Just briefly so we can learn a little bit more about you and what your journey was like. And then we have some questions for y'all as well to follow up. So Taya, do you wanna get us started? Yeah, hey guys, I'm just briefly gonna introduce myself. I am Taya Williams. I am a recent graduate, so I just graduated this December, so it's still pretty fresh. Miss OU, always my home. Um, dual degree, international studies and sociology with a criminology track, Spanish minor, gotta plug that in there, been practicing. Um, and so how I just found my community really just first figuring out, thank you, first figuring out um, my place and who I was as an individual. And by doing that, it really was finding my community here at OU, plugging myself any way possible. As Hunter was saying, he was preaching, but definitely like stepping out of your comfort zone and really going into areas you wouldn't even think that you would thrive in, but essentially like you have to want it for yourself. So with that regard, just kind of just 
a buffet style, picking what I like, picking what I don't like. Oh, I like this, but maybe not so much trying to go through the process of being involved, but then taking too much on my plate and having to step back. It really was just a journey, a beautiful journey. I believe that there is beauty in the struggle. Of course, college has its ups and downs, but again, having your support system and really just like finding your space, um, you figure out your why, what you're passionate about and to live your authentic truth. So it's a little bit about me. <laughs> Awesome. I love that, Taya. Um, hey, everyone. My name's Justin. Uh, I'm also a recent graduate of OU. I graduated last spring, and I'm coming to you live from New York City. Um, I'm now a law student at Columbia University, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, really similar to Taya, I would say in terms of finding community, I also just really put myself out there, hit the ground running. Um, my first day on campus, there's a huge involvement fair, then I was at every booth, like grabbing everything. Um, but from there, I was really able to connect with certain people and find things that I really liked, things that I didn't even realize I was interested in until I started really putting myself out there and talking to different types of people. And now those are some of the best friends that I made at OU. Like whenever I got the email that Cade was going to be on this call and like Brooklyn and Taya, I was so excited because I mean, these are people that I have so many incredible memories with, which seems odd that we go to such a large school, but we have such intimate connections. But that is like one of the things that makes Oh, you so special to me and I, I do miss it, but it's always in my heart. Justin, you kind of alluded to this, but uh, maybe Taya can answer too. What do, would you all say is the first step to um, take when you get on campus towards getting involved? You talk, you talk about the involvement fair, but um, if that's overwhelming to folks, what's another way to take that first step? Yeah, the definitely the involvement fair can be a lot at once. And so if you want maybe a situation where you can filter through things, one of the great things about OU is that as soon as you get that OU email, um, you will get lots and lots of organizations reaching out to you about all the opportunities that there are to get involved on campus. And so I know I my roommate um, was not super into like, you know, going to all the huge in person events. But um, every night he'd be checking his OU email and filtering through and deciding if you wanted to go to a certain meeting or, you know, apply for a different organization to be on the board of. And he found that really helpful. Yeah, kind of to add on to that. Oh, sorry, Kimberly. But to add on to that, um, definitely, yes, utilize your OU email. I know it seems like an influx of things, but I promise you there's something that you'll find interesting. There's been plenty of examples where I'm like, oh, I want to go to this or a little salsa dancing. Like, let me check this out. And I've met really cool people. Um, I, too, I do want to stress it's definitely quality over quantity. And so really choosing things wisely. You'll see, even when you're walking, you'll see posters about certain things. You'll overhear conversations of students talking about something on the South Oval. Hey, chime in the conversation. Be like, okay, what are y'all talking about? Let me get a part of it. I think it's don't have to think about things in bigger settings. Like if you're not obviously the type and of course we we get this narrative be involved be involved yes because it's definitely the way you make connections um but there are definitely ways to go about it whether it's just with people on your floor as hunter was talking about your um actual floor with people they talk about so many other things that they're a part of there's always conversations hop right in i think just go full force for it that's great thanks so much yeah you both really highlighted um, what OU has that I like to call the snowball effect, which is where if you make one friend, that friend will introduce you to their friends and those friends will introduce you to their friends. And it's like a big snowball, will just keep going um, and you'll get more and more friends and more connections and more community there. So thanks for, for highlighting that. And Taya, you started to kind of talk about this a little bit. How do you determine which organizations really matter? I know a lot of students can sometimes overcommit or overfill their plate. So how do you start to determine which communities are going to be those ones you really want to invest in? Yeah, I'm definitely not speaking for myself. I know I can probably speak for a lot of you guys on the call, Justin, Kate being super involved and in being in every and anything you could imagine, um, but realizing that those were the things that you love to do. Um, and it essentially it can be hard, like that first opportunity. But again, as Hunter said, it really is a buffet. Um, choose something that you like and you will know if you want to continue that 
for another year. If it starts to feel like an obligation rather than an opportunity, it's not for you. And it's okay. Sometimes you just have to reevaluate. I promise you, I've had to reevaluate so many things throughout college and don't feel bad about it. I know um, it can be hard to, and I'm the type of person where I'm like, I want to fully commit and I want to go full force. And you can't commit if you're not 100% in, right? And so um, I think it's best longevity for an organization. And you see that, okay, maybe I could see myself, maybe if you're just a member, which is still super important next year I want to be on exec Ooh, then I maybe want to be chair right you just see yourself working up and that just shows like your full commitment into the mission also think about the people that you're a part of it with right can you hang with these people do you vibe with those people do you vibe with the mission I think it's all about just like okay I see myself fitting I see myself supported and contributing and just rolling through that I think it's important Justin what about you yeah, I would echo everything Taya said 100%. Um, and just to really stress on that last point that she was making, it really does come down to like friendships sometimes. Um, you know, obviously you shouldn't join an organization just for friends, nor do I think you should leave one because you aren't making friends. Like, you know, give everything a the good college try. But if you find that you're continuing to find yourself in situations where like Taya said, it's an obligation, not an opportunity. You're not finding people that you can connect with outside of this organization. If you're just showing up every Tuesday to the union and you're not having a good time, then it might not be the thing for you. The really awesome thing about OU is that there are there's such a breadth of things that you can do that there is really something for everyone. And so you can find the things that bring you the most joy. Um, and that's what being involved on campus should be. It's that step away from the academics where we're all grinding super hard, um, all of those things. And you're with people who are enhancing you in other ways. You know, you're getting your academic education. And now it's time to like learn socially, um, learn culturally. And those are things that you do in environments where you're having a good time and you're enjoying yourself. That's awesome. You all, I mean, it's been a long time since I've been an undergrad at OU, but you reminded me of my I, my days of walking on the South Oval and reading the chalk or, or hearing somebody overhearing or actually the way I got involved in our Black Student Association, my friend wanted, was like, come with me to this officer interest meeting. And I was like, I don't want to do that. She said, come on. So I go, listen, I get really energized and then I become an officer and she didn't. So um, you just never know how you're going to find your path in all of this. So just be open to opportunities. But then once you are, once you have been, know how to narrow it down and, and, and only do what beats your soul on a consistent basis. Um, our last question for you all is, um, <clears throat> what is one of your favorite memories with the community on campus? And I know that's probably hard for you all because you had just great times at the university, but if you can just narrow it down to one, maybe two of your favorite memories with the community. Um, I can go first, just as a, a, a blanket, a general one, I won't go too much into this one, but I will say one of my favorite memories to this day is um, Taya and I were fortunate enough to be on um, homecoming court together our senior year. And just like very quickly, like we spent that whole day of the event together and it was just so fun, fun, fun. Um, but aside from that, I would say one of my favorite OU memories was um, actually my, my freshman year was the first year that OU did something that they do every year now called Crimson and Queens, which is the largest drag show in the state of Oklahoma. It's a, it's a big deal. They bring in like professional performers, local performers. Um, and I remember I saw the email for it and like, I growing up like I mean I was a, a big fan of drag like I watched all the shows and etc but I was like but like that's not really for me like I'm not I'm not gonna strap on the heels and do all the crazy stuff but um a lot of my friends were like no like you should do it especially the friends that I was making um in the through the queer groups on campus um they were really pushing me to do that I think mostly because they thought it'd be funny to watch me, but um, I, so I decided to apply, I auditioned and the next thing you know, I'm in the show um, and I performed it my freshman year, so nervous, but it was probably like the most fun that I had all year. And it became something that I did every single year that I was at OU. Um, and so Black Cherry, my alter ego, she made quite the name for herself. Um, and I made so many amazing friends through that. I, and I even found myself bringing friends who weren't interested in that part of queer culture into it. Um, and it was just cool to share that with them. And so that is just something that re one of my favorite things about OU. 
yes like king energy love it just wow good vibes i i've been to actually a um, few of the shows and so it's definitely just like breathtaking warm a whole different environment and it's just incredible and sidebar too with homecoming um like dustin said it was amazing and you just don't really realize that like how many well there's amazing leaders and bomb individuals on campus and then when you're all in one circle together and you're like dang we've never really well yes we've interacted in different aspects but this is the moment where we actually got to just connect without every distraction and organization. And so it was super fun. So I enjoyed that time with you too, Justin. Um, I would say one of my most oh, memorable communities or experiences on campus, there's been a lot, but I would say, so I, I changed my major like six times. I was everywhere, but I finally found community um, with uh, my international affairs degree. Um, and so with that, being involved with the international community and with that going abroad several times. And so um, I definitely, um, found a space just by being um, around different international students. And OU has uh, many international students, actually a heavy population of international students. And so it's just been great to gain perspective and just learn outside of what, what we find normal or what we find, uh, what we do naturally on everyday basis. And you speak to international students, they're like, well, this is this. And everything is just so different. And so even going abroad and having opportunities in um, Italy, France, Mexico, it's just been very breathtaking and um, eye opening to certain things that I wouldn't have even thought about if I didn't have those opportunities to connect with international students abroad. And so uh, just finding that space, I, I, I was able to embrace my difference. And so imagine inter international students coming to a whole different country, a whole new language and language and right. And there are obviously it's so many different aspects. And so but um, having being around uh, certain students in that space, being able to say, OK, I'm different and that's OK. And I love this space and I'm standing for who I am. And my culture and so it's just really allowed me to be more um culturally aware um and appreciative of those opportunities yeah study abroad will blow you away i definitely you're able to do it i know covid and whatnot but we are prayers things are working in our favor to go abroad i suggest you guys to do it it's definitely an opportunity that everyone should experience so yeah great thanks so much y'all for sharing um, that was awesome insight to get to hear from y'all, and I love getting to hear those experiences as well. Taya and Justin, any kind of final advice or words that y'all would want to give to, you know, some prospective students looking at finding their place at OU and um, kind of how they can start preparing now for what that will look like? Sure. That's always such a big ask, right? It's like, parting words like <laughs> um so i would say first of all to everyone who's on the call like obviously tay and i could like really talk your ear off all, all day but um you know we are just one part of like the larger puzzle so obviously like take what we say with a grain of salt um and like continue to explore everything that ou has to offer through all the different vessels that oar um, admissions and recruitment offers to you but with that being said one thing i will say is like i I, I talk about OU so much at school now, um, and it wasn't until I graduated that I realized how much of an impact the people that I met here had on my life and like continue to have. Um, and so whenever you're looking at colleges, whenever I used to, I used to be a tour guide on campus, and this is something I would always say at the end of my tours is that you know, whenever you're looking at colleges, um, academics are great, getting involved is great, but you really want to make sure that you are going to a place where you are comfortable walking out of there for five years later, however long it takes you to graduate, it doesn't matter because you got your degree, you're done. Um, but you come out the other side and you have this whole community of people behind you who are ready to support you in whatever you do. And you feel like you have grown, not just as an academic, but as a person. Um, and that is just like the biggest gift that I think OU has given to me is just being able to like go forth with friends and feel like I can do anything. Yeah, I definitely agree. But everything Justin said is uh, super important. Um, I just want to just uh, encourage you guys first, just breathe. 
this is a whole different chapter of your life. It can be scary. Um, it can be overwhelming. Um, and so please utilize the resources, your support systems, make new friends to make this experience the best version of yourself um, yourself, and your experience as a whole. As Justin has said, we're, we're just an ounce of what OU, what the people at OU and what uh, OU has to offer. There's so many other experiences that maybe we haven't even embarked on that it would have been great too. But um, of course, our stories are our stories. And I want you to know that we all have our own paths so take your time um of course you know you can be inspired by our stories but essentially create your own space create your own why create your own vision for yourself and go forward fight for what you want uh, do what what you want nobody's stopping you literally the world is yours at OU you create your own destiny as you would say um and really just go in and um do it and also again I think I already said but please be kind to yourself again it's a lot um, and I'm just super excited for you guys. It's just crazy. Cause like I graduated in four and a half years. And at first it was like, man, I'm graduating a, like a semester later, but I did it. It was the best decision that I made. Cause I needed more time. And I'm like, wow, you know, getting on this call, we're done. And you guys are the future. You guys are there to owe you, make it the way you want it to be and just have a great time. So I'm excited for you guys. Go owe you. <laughs> Great, thanks so much y'all for being here. Um, absolutely loved getting to hear from y'all and the, the wisdom that you have given us all on, on this subject and on this matter. So, um, well, that about concludes everything that we have for y'all today. Um, so if you have like a super, super pressing question that you were really wanting to ask that didn't quite get to, feel free to stay on. Um, but I wanna go ahead and respect the time of all our panelists and those who are able to join us as well. Um, so we don't take up too much of your time. So thanks so much for joining us all today. I hope you learned something new and exciting about finding your community at OU. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a wonderful start to your weekend.